Hello YouTube, nice to see you again. Tonight I want to talk to you about what I think is a really really fun topic to explore and that is the magical world of sound color. Now you might be asking me what do you exactly mean by sound color and why is it magical? Sound color is probably what made you fall in love with a cello and want to learn to play it in the first place. And that is our ability to play a single note in a thousand different ways. A couple of weeks ago, I had a conversation with a student of mine in a lesson and um, I had just uh, given that student a new piece to learn which um, I thought they were going to be absolutely thrilled with, which, um, which is a swan. Of course, this very, very famous, incredibly beautiful um, piece, uh, and this iconic piece for the cello. And um, so they were a little bit hesitant. And then I asked, all right. And the answer was, yeah, I just, I just don't think I'm very good at being expressive. So that made me think and that made us have a long conversation about this topic because, of course, what essentially draws everyone to the cello is the fact that it's so close to the human voice and its expressive potential is absolutely endless. But I think when you hear someone, you know, play the cello really, really well, I think there is sometimes a misconception that when you hear a really sort of beautiful phrase that, you know, it's all just God-given talent and inspiration and it just all pours out of us, you know, like that. Which, um, whilst of course, you know, having ideas and inspiration also is, is a very important point, um, the beauty is really underpinned by an awful lot of technical craft. And that is precisely what I want to sort of do a deep dive with you in, in this video. So, any the colour, sort of the, well, what do I mean by colour, really, the expression, the emotion of each note we play is really determined by a series of parameters which we set. Yeah, when I talk about parameters, um, I want you to think along the lines of um, perhaps you will have um, experimented with, for instance, you know, picture editing software, even on your phone, you may have exper been experimented, you know, with the different filters that you have got or, uh, you know, played around with uh, things like uh, brightness, um, shadow, contrast, exposure, all of those things. And you will have noticed that depending on, you know, how you sort of move these different sliders, the picture will start to look very, very different indeed and give you a completely different expression, completely different feel. Now, that's the idea with which we are going to be working in this video. Now, what are our parameters that essentially decide how a note is going to sound? And for me, there are three fundamental ones and each of these will have a sort of a few subcategories, but in essence, the three main ones are our contact point, where on the string we bow, are we going to be very close to the fingerboards, more in the middle, closer to the bridge? So that is one thing we can control. The other one is at what speed do we move our bow? Again, 
has a huge influence on how the note is going to sound. And lastly, of course, there is the left hand, which obviously can greatly influence the colour of a note through our use and speed and width of vibrato. So I want to take you through each of these parameters and show you exactly how the outcome of the note is going to change depending on how we mix them. And for that, I am going to use a single note. So the note I'm going to be using for the purposes of this demonstration is A, first finger in fourth position. And we are going to explore the full range of parameters that we have got. And the first one I mentioned, of course, was contact point. So the first thing I'm going to do, and which I encourage you to do, when you're going to go away and practice this, is to only start focusing on contact point. So you keep exactly the same speed of the bow, no vibrato, just pure note, but with each subsequent bow, you're going to change your contact point. So let's see what happens. So I'm very close to the fingerboard at the moment. So now I'm going to start to move away a little bit. Bow speed stays the same and I'm going to move even closer to the bridge. Obviously, what you could hear in the process was what completely changed was sort of the density or coming back to the image editing idea, the sort of opacity of the note, the transparency of the note. Yeah. We started very, very close to the fingerboard and you could literally see through the note, right? It was so you know, kind of fragile, right? Now, as we move closer to the bridge, and you will probably have been told a million times, you know, by your, by, uh, you know, whoever is, is teaching you, move closer to the bridge, move closer to the bridge, move closer to the bridge. Because for some reason or another, I think for most cellists, the sort of natural <laughs> comfort zone is, up here, you know, sort of what I usually call the fluffy land. Yeah, now, fluffy. Why do we get fluffy up here? Because a string, you're quite away from the bridge. It doesn't have a lot of tension on it here. So that's why it doesn't give you a lot of focus. As we move closer to the bridge, tension on the string is much higher, so you get much, much more focus on the note. Now, let's try exactly the same thing again, but I'm going to do all of that now with throwing the next parameter into the mix, and that is bow speed. Yeah, so we're going to do exactly the same idea, but with, let's say, 20% more bow speed. different result. Why? Because we've increased the speed at which we are making the string move, so we're getting a lot more reverberation and you can literally see how, you know, the, the sound starts to really vibrate and really ring. So you could do the same again, add a bit more speed still. So... can 
here yet again we have got a different color so at this point uh you might be asking what role does the weight of the arm play and as i mentioned earlier um each of these parameters has a sort of slight you know um, subsection and i've thought about this quite a bit and i actually think that the arm weight almost naturally increases as we open the arm more when we go closer to the bridge it's quite difficult to play with a lot of arm weight when we're, we're, we're near the fingerboard it doesn't it doesn't really work so it's almost natural that as we go closer to the bridge the arm starts to starts to sink yeah because we also almost naturally adapt to the way that the string just feels different and responds differently as we go closer to the bridge so now we've already explored quite a lot we can do with our right hand alone and i would always 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 say when you're exploring this and once you start to incorporate it into your playing always do as much as possible with your right hand alone first before you throw vibrato into the mix so now let's indeed throw vibrato into the mix and have a look so we're going to start again near the fingerboard with even slow bow speed but now we're going to add a slow vibrato changing contact point my vibrato hasn't changed nor has my bow chain speed changed and as you can hear i've already gone through a huge range of different colors now let's try the same vibrato speed but with slightly faster bow and warning here that is not easy to do at all because <laughs> to teach your body to increase one without increasing the other is not easy so be patient with that now happens if I slightly increase the vibrato speed and we're going we're going to again start with a slow bow of emotion here right even in that you know going from sort of quite fragile to sort of almost quite insistent yeah and now let's see what happens if i not only increase the vibrato speed but also the bow speed again right so i would really urge you to practice first of all each sort of possible combination of parameters really on their own because that is what helps you in the long run to build that expressive toolkit and obviously you know also try it on try it on different 
notes and then probably try it on different fingers yeah so that you train your sort of vibrato flexibility um equally on um on every finger now so we have done each in a sort of controlled way in isolation our next step needs to be to manipulate to learn to manipulate a note as we play it under control and that is a really important thing and that's why i think it's so important to practice to really also acknowledge that in order to get great expression you need to have phenomenal technical control over that so we now want to learn how we can actually manipulate a note as we play it which of course is what what does the magic yeah when you're playing the piano uh once you've played a note it's done it immediately starts decaying right we have some control over pedaling and things like that but we don't have that magical ability to turn a note into anything we want while we're playing it so let's see what happens if i now change parameters as i play so let's start first of all changing again without a brata changing nothing but bow speed on the note so you see there's already quite a lot there that you can do now obviously i think i may have subconsciously been doing it already anyway you can at the same time also experiment with what happens if you change contact point so this point obviously i should say uh i know that obviously you know we're all taught uh you know endlessly to learn to play with a straight bow and uh i assume many of you found my channel through a video on exactly that topic uh how do we what i would describe as sort of changing lanes in a controlled way without abandoning you know everything we have learned and the way what I would liken it to is a little bit, um, imagine you're, you're driving and you're changing lanes on a motorway, which in the US is what I think you call a highway. So uh, you don't, you know, sort of wax a steering wheel around. It's done over quite some distance and it's the subtlest of movements, right? It's almost when you look at the hands it's almost imperceptible and it's the same with the bow here so you look at that what i do i do it over a distance yeah obviously if you were to do it you know really rapidly you would get all sorts of noises so uh so that's talking about that now another thing you can try you throw vibrato into the mix you see okay for instance what happens if i increase vibrato speed and bow speed simultaneously oh hello so there we have a really really powerful tool right so I think you get the idea. You can essentially make up any combination you like and experiment with that. What is important in the process is making sure that you are actually executing the parameters that you set out to use in a controlled manner. And that's, that's not easy. But this whole thing that I've just demonstrated to you try to really integrate that in your practice because what it will do so when you come back to playing you know especially pieces like the swan or anything you know really expressive you'll approach it with much much greater awareness and you will also awareness of 
sound and a phrase and you will hopefully start to ask yourself first of all some questions as to what do I actually want to say here where do I want that phrase to go what is you know what sort of sound what is the emotion and by doing that all of a sudden you have taken a step from just hopefully playing the right notes in the right order to what I would call the foundations of artistry and for me that is a point where playing the cello starts to be really 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 good fun one thing I would encourage you to do is take um, choose a piece of music uh, and the swan is a good example another really really great example is the beginning of uh, Schubert's Arbogone Sonata uh, go on YouTube and check out four or five different videos of you know really 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 great cellists and now with the information that you have look at the choices that they make and listen out to how these choices fundamentally alter the way the phrase comes across and what it makes you feel yeah so what you will see there is vastly different choices in terms of the contact point in terms of bow speed of course one additional aspect to that which we haven't really gone into today is fingering because obviously most notes you can play on one or two or three or sometimes even four different strings and depending on which string you choose to play it on you will inherently get a different color so that's also something i want you to to uh, to try out yeah but so just make that experiment and uh, most importantly have a lot of fun with exploring sound color in your practice as always i hope this has been really helpful in taking you a little bit further on your cello journey if you haven't done so already smash that like button uh, subscribe to my channel for much much more content coming soon and uh, i look forward to seeing you again cheerio